And those often go hand in hand with the recovery world. Uh, you know, I mean, all of a sudden, you know, we've talked about it. You get out of a rehab center, you start to think clearly, but you've got this mountain ahead of you. You feel depressed. You feel overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. You don't know how you're going to do it. I mean, I can see a direct correlation in it. And you've talked about getting sober. It, may, it doesn't always make everything better right away. No. It gives you the power to make things better, but now you're facing the things that you were probably avoiding with your substance abuse. You know, and a lot of people, we've talked about this before in my recovery, uh, I, my addiction didn't begin with a traumatic experience. And, you know, I got into it for fun and then it, it took over my life. But for many people that I've witnessed in the rooms and in rehab, Sometimes there was a traumatic experience mm -hmm. sure. that led them down that road. Mm -hmm. And now that they're sober, they have to go back and deal with that. Deal with and if that. you're not properly prepared, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it – Or know how to get the help and support. So, so, I, so Hope Squads, that's one uh, great way that thing, this conversation is happening in schools. Tell us more about what you're doing in Tooele. Well, and, and one thing I – if. If I can just throw one thing in there. Sure. So when we're talking about kids, because the Hope Squads have been mostly kids, there is data out there that shows that underage drinking, mm -hmm. uh, underage, uh, underage drug use, those types of things that lead to addiction, um, the brain's not developed. And, you know, you look at kids and the very last part of the brain to develop is that frontal lobe. And that's your rationalization, your uh, common sense, judgment, common sense. reason, judgment, foresight, yeah. attention, concentration, which explains teenagers, right? Because right. they don't have any of that. And, <laughs> right. uh, but but they the stats show that a teenager or a, ch or a child that has been drinking or or suffering with those addictive yeah. products Using drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any of those in the last 30 days their risk of suicide almost triples. So impulsivity, that's, I, I, I love talking the neuroscience. So our frontal lobes also help just with judgment and reason, but also with, uh, you know, impulse control. Yeah, that's right? the one I was looking for. Yeah, time. yeah. And so when you, when you delay that development or even damage that development and a person is then in a crisis mode, they're, they're, they're intoxicated or they're feeling uh, depressed and desperate, then if that impulsivity is low... Mm -hmm. then uh, dangerous behaviors often follow. Yeah, and, and the one thing I was going to mention, too, is so if you're talking about leading up to a crisis, I mean, you could be on this flat level playing field where your life's going okay, nothing mm -hmm. rocky, you're just kind of cruising along. And that can go for a, a number of years where you don't ever have the thought of it or, or never really have to worry about that. And then what happens is you hit the pyramid and that pyramid, that that going up towards the the peak, could last for weeks, where your the crisis is starting to to build, mm -hmm. and then you have that that tip, the pinnacle of it, that can last minutes or hours. And if you can get that person, and they feel that that human connection and that love and that empathy and the caring, um, where somebody offers them hope and 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 lets them know that they're not hopeless, that you can get through this. You can get through that minute of crisis for days or weeks. It can, it can come back down the other side of that pyramid and get you back down to that level of playing field. You could go years and years and never have that thought again. Mm -hmm. And so this is the most uh, treatable. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it can be treated. And you can walk away and never, ever hit that moment of crisis again. And I think that's what's important to let people know because some people think you hit that. Something must be wrong with you. You've got to be broken. So, John, let me ask you this. Um, you, you came on the show and, and we've talked about your best friend's son who committed suicide and then your son's teammate who committed suicide. But that led you to do something. What did that lead you to do? Well, you know, my wife and I had talked. We're already busy. We have a lot going on. But uh, I, I struggled with it for a couple of weeks after that. And – just I, the thought and the – You know, thinking something's got to be done. You can't keep losing all these kids, right? And so I remember laying awake one night and then saying to my wife, OK, we're going to start a foundation. We are going to be part of the solution. And she kind of laughed at me and says, you don't know anything about suicide. And I didn't. 
I really didn't. In hindsight, we've come a long way and, and we're doing some incredible things. But that day I knew nothing. And so you just my, knew something needed to be done. Something needed to be done. And so we, we went ahead and we got as many trainings as we could. We got involved in our community. And that wasn't easy. Um, if somebody is thinking that they need to do something in this area, I would say go to your city and find out where the coalitions are. Find a way to join something that's already moving forward and, and, and be part of it and be part of the solution that way. Um, starting a foundation is not the easiest thing to do. Um, met a little bit of resistance along the way where people didn't want to let you into that game. Why? I don't know. I think there's – it gets a little territorial. But I'll tell you the one thing that I think has been really successful in Tooele is it might have taken a year or two. But once we, we uh, realize we're all on the same team, we're all doing that general push in the same direction uh, using evidence-based programs and, and doing things together, I think that's been our success. So Utah's ranked fifth in the nation for suicide, um, 29 counties. Tooele in 2014 was fourth. So we mm. were at the high end of Utah. Now we take a little bit of, of heat because – a lot of people drive out to the desert and take their lives. And so they're not necessarily residents of Tooele County, but they get recorded in Tooele County. But we were fourth. Five years later, we're 21st. Wow. And it's that's... been a huge dramatic drop. Yeah. Now, that's not saying we're perfect, and that's not saying that we're not struggling. Or, no, but I love that that's a measurable it. change. It is a measurable change. In the change. right direction. And it's because of the way that we all work together. I, I've, I've – brought it up before that we're kind of like fingers on a hand. The school district does something differently than we do. Um, Not only the school district, the health department. We have a communities that care in Tooele City. We have Valley Behavioral. We've got Liceworth Living Foundation. That's my foundation, the Liceworth Living Foundation. And so we all might do something a little different, but we all have our strengths. And so if we just work on each other's strengths and do this general push, you're going to reach people. Because you know what? There's people that that might come to the foundation and they don't feel like they click. And that's okay. It's kind of like therapist. If somebody goes to a therapist mm-hmm. and they don't click, find a different therapist because yeah. you're eventually going to click with somebody. But the one thing that we noticed in 2014 right off the bat that Tooele did not have a support group for lost survivors and for those that are struggling with thoughts of suicide. And so I thought to myself, and I'll, I'll admit it, I'm not one of those guys. I don't. I wouldn't go sit in a room full of strangers and tell my deepest, darkest stuff. I just, I'm not that right. way. I'm a little bit more keep it to myself, and I might make jokes about it, mm-hmm. you know, to to be able to talk about it. But make jokes and be kind of indirect. I'm kind of more like Casey, mm-hmm. I think, in in that respect, you know. And so, but I thought, you know what? We're the only county that doesn't have one. Let's start one. And so we started it, and. Our so your very, foundation is a – how would you describe it? It's a, it's a support group? Yeah. Well, we're a 501c3 nonprofit and uh, we do a support group. So that's mm-hmm. only one portion. One, one of portion. the things you do. Okay. But we started this support group and I thought the first, the first night we did it, I think we were in a church because it was free. Yeah. And uh, we brought donuts because, you know, if you're – suffering with thoughts of suicide donuts will make that better or you know it's the only way to get people together (laughs) is treats we brought refreshments (laughs) and and i remember looking at the board members saying i hope we don't feel stupid i hope we're not just all sitting here eating donuts looking at each other but you know what to be honest that's what you hope that there wasn't a need for that (laughs) you know that everyone's doing good but the reality is is there there, there's a need for this yeah and and that night 15 people showed up Oh, Five great. of them were, in su- were suicidal. Were suicidal, but ages what do you think? They were in their early twenties to about twenty five. Mm. Yeah, and a lot of these kids uh, that, that stood out to to my wife and I that night. Tell them what you thought. I mean, what was the reason that they were suicidal? There's a lot of them uh, peaked in high school, and and then they got out of high school, and they were trying to find their way. Mm. You know, they felt like they were something in high school, and then they take off to ca- college or whatever. Yeah. And now they're no longer the – Yeah, you know, I think that story is pretty common for yeah. a, a lot of people. But you so you do this and, and, and you see a need for it. And so you said that's just one thing that you guys do. What else do you guys do? 
Well, so uh, last year, for instance, we knew that we were losing way too many veterans, 22 a day. Now, that's a uh, conservative estimate. I mean, it, that's nationwide. Nationwide, 22 a day. That's the number that we stick with, but with the opiate problem and things like that, there's been estimates that that could be as high as 40, 70 mm. a day, but we just don't know. But the way it's recorded, 22 a day. So we decided we live in a military town. We were going to do something that had not been done before. There, There is not a monument that talks about veteran suicide and tries to give resources to maybe str- struggling veterans and their families that they might not even know about. Mm. And so we decided in 2018, January 1st, we were going to start raising money for this quarter of a million dollar bronze monument, a statue. And uh, we've got a sculptor in Tooele County that's very well known across the nation. His name's Dan Snar. And uh, just a great guy. And we decided, let's, let's raise the money for this and let's put it in our veterans park. And we raised money like crazy. And in Tooele, that's a tough thing to do. We're not, mm-hmm. you know, a super rich community. But people came to the call and were willing because to Because we care. Donate, you know. We care about our veterans. And, and we now in our veterans park have an 18-foot bronze monument talks about veteran suicide. So, so a statistic on here that, that most people don't know. In the Vietnam War, we lost 58,220 soldiers to combat. 58,000, that's a ton, right? Mm-hmm. In the Middle East, we haven't lost that many. So, I mean, 58,000 is huge. Since the Vietnam War, we've lost 170,000 to suicide. Of just our Vietnam vets. Of just the Vietnam vets wow. as well. So, Almost three times. So Yeah, three to one. So my, my wife and I had gone up to the state capitol, and we were watching a movie uh, preview. Thank you, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Mm-hmm. Incredible. Do- now there's two. It's mm-hmm. not the movie. It's the documentary. documentary. And the documentary was powerful. But that's where that statistic came out, the 170,000. Mm-hmm. That kind of was the, the tipping point for us where we said we've got to do something for it. And so – we raised money for that statue, and on the back it has bronze plaques of uh, to throw one out. Uh, Continue Mission. Continue Mission is a, a good friend of mine, Josh Hansen. He runs a program for veterans. He gets them back into groups, and they get out and do physical things, whether it's mountain biking or skiing or uh, stand up paddle boarding. But they get those guys together, and mm. his program has been proven to to curb PTSD by 80%. Wow. And so we're putting those plaques and it's a it's a 6 foot pedestal that this this statue sits on a 12 foot soldier. Mm. We want to fill up that base with different different resources that are out there because like I said, you got to find one that fits for you and and is there an online uh, equivalent resource where people can come and look at what you're doing if they're not able to come out to to uh, Tooele? So there <laughs> Yes and no. Um, we we suffered a loss uh, last fourth a year ago, last Fourth of July. Our web designer, great kid, his name was Max Young. He had lost a brother to suicide. Um, he's a Twilla boy as well, and uh, he went to college, and became a web designer, and he was helping us with this statue and the project and everything. And right before the Fourth of July, he said, "When I get back." from my trip, my fishing trip to Idaho. When I get back, we're going to sit down and show you how to get in the back end of your, your website, and, and then I'll hand everything over to you. And he made it as far as Pocatello and, and was in a terrible car accident. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And uh, he's incapacitated. He's uh, no longer able to speak. He can sit up in bed, but... Uh, Sorry, I hate to be a boob. No. no but no. Uh, so we were unable to have access to our website. Sure. And uh, they wouldn't let us back in. I tried to update the credit card and try to have the web hosting company to let us in and and we're unable to. So we no. lost our website. Worst thing in the world, you know, to lose your website. But we are on Facebook. Our Facebook page gets about two and a half million hits a year. We we put every uh, day. Our daughter gets up and puts uh, uh, a quote up that, and 
to make people be Positive inspired quote. for the day, you know, oh, if they're great. struggling. Yeah. And we do, he didn't say this, we do educate people. We've brought a lot of um, trainings to Tooele. Yeah. Uh, one was on addiction. We've had um, bowling. We've had a lot of different people come, and then we open it to the whole community to come to learn about all these different things and aspects that could cause um, suicides. You're listening to Project Recovery. More of John's story coming up. Much like addiction, uh, suicide, there needs to be an education on all fronts. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's important to know uh, what sorts of things uh, such as substance abuse increase the likelihood that a person might be suicidal yeah. and that education that you guys are doing is so valuable and well, you guys were also instrumental in the safe ut app so uh daniel thatcher senator thatcher um is our senator in Twilla. he and a, another good friend of mine i've known him for 30 years representative steve elison he's out of sandy um those two and and yeah, I got to give a shout out to Sean Ray as our attorney general. He's a stud. You want um, me to pick these up? The names you keep dropping? Yeah. yeah. Well, those three. <laughs> 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 and let me go on with that. No, just, <laughs> but uh, those three really great guys um, decided that something needed to be done. Um, back when we were in school, they had that. Remember that oak box that was by the counseling office? Yeah. And it had the little slit, and then they'd take all the screwed up uh, copy paper that they'd yeah. messed up and cut them into little squares, and you could put tips in there. Yeah, nobody wanted to be that guy. No, and and they realized <laughs> that. So the safe the safe UT app is cool in the respect that yeah. you sign up with what school you're in, whether it's an elementary school all the way up to to high school, and you can report. Anything now? Everybody remembers Columbine, right? Mm -hmm. So, how cool it would it have been if we could have reported that and had live data going to the police? We're in room such and such. We're locked down. We're safe. Um, all of those things. Well, that kind of led to the Safe UT app. You can report planned school attacks on on the Safe UT app, but it, you can also report if you've got a buddy that's suffering suicidal, with being suicidal. And so, mm -hmm. um, we're really proud in Tooele. Uh, you can also, I, I need to say, uni is behind this. Right. So if you hit the call button, somebody at uni, a licensed clinical social worker, will answer that phone call within 15 seconds. Right. We have 24-7 we have uh, crisis counseling available associated with the app. Yeah. And we're very lucky to have them. I mean, we really are. They do, they do amazing a, they work. They do a good job. And But most kids today don't call anybody on the phone. They text, right? Right. So right. you can text – yeah, a licensed clinical social worker and get an answer back within 15 seconds, day or yeah, night, It's anytime. impressive. Yep. And so we're really proud that we pushed that out. We've got it in the Tooele School District. It's in every school district in the state now. And Tooele is the most used. So we've got more kids signing up in our schools, mm -hmm. more kids reporting. And last year, we saw a decrease in, by 14 percent in youth suicides due to that app. So, I mean, that's huge. No, that's tremendous. Why do you think that uh, the youth out in Tooele are utilizing it so so well? Because that, that group, that, that general push that we have in Tooele yeah. is all pushing in that direction. It's we're back trying to education, to, isn't it? Yeah, we're, exposure. we're making sure that we push that Safe UT app everywhere we go. Um, the other thing that we didn't talk about is we do do some fact-based training. So um, we do... QPR, as a community, we teach it in, in City Hall. It stands for Question, Persuade, and Refer. Uh, we, that's an hour and a half training, two hours. We do that. We do Talk Saves Lives that is from AFSP, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And then we do a three-hour training for teachers and counselors that is Safe Talk. And that's just kind of an amped up version, you know, mm -hmm. takes it a little bit deeper. And so we do that. We teach hundreds and hundreds of people. You know, unfortunately, I've received multiple emails on our Facebook page of loved ones who have lost uh, loved ones to suicide mm -hmm. as reflection of their addiction. And, yep. you know, I think that's what we want to do is start a conversation and get everybody talking about them. I don't think you can have too many resources for either addiction or suicide. No, and when I th – you know, um, from my point of view, when people – are educated about something, you see the world differently. And so, you know, people, when they become educated on 
the signs of, of distress and suicide, of substance use and abuse, you, you start to see the opportunity to intervene and help and be supportive uh, that you probably didn't, wouldn't have seen otherwise. I think there's a lot of people in addiction and in suicide whose loved ones would say, well, that's, that's not my kid or that, that's not my right. loved one. That would, no, they're not that type of person. Right. And, and you don't understand. And that's usually us talking, hoping. That's, that's usually a, a deep down inside the person's kind of saying, I, I hope that my fr- friend, family member would never struggle with this. But we kind of push it off and use denial. And that uh, continues to keep people in the dark. And, and that's what we want to do with this podcast is start a conversation. So we want to say thank you for coming in and sharing your story. If people want to find out more information about your foundation and your Facebook page, where do they go? So on Facebook, it's Life's Worth Living Foundation, L-I-F apostrophe – or L-I-F-E apostrophe S. And uh, we're on Instagram, Twitter. We will have our website back up and rolling. Um, that's just such a bummer. But uh, – um, well, we're sure sorry to hear about his yeah. accident and, you know, um, tragedies uh, of, you know, that's an example of how tragedy will touch everyone's life in some form or fashion. And whether we're talking, you know, it, it, all of us, it's not just teenagers that need connection and support. All of us at any age need connection and support. And when we talk about the things that are going on, whether it has to do with substance use or abuse, whether it's suicide whether it's um, you know some traumatic experience that we're having, we support each other and, and help each other through these things. So we appreciate you willing, being willing to share honestly about th- this experience, and we hope uh, he and his family are getting the help and support they need. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. And I, I think the one thing when you tie those two together, again, addiction and suicide, is to listen without judgment. I mean, yeah. for, the, for, the, for the addicts? They don't need the judgment. They're judging themselves. You know what I mean? Right. And for those people that are struggling with thoughts of suicide, again, judgment isn't helpful. It, it, if you can show that there's hope, I mean, that, really, that's what it boils down to. If you can show there's hope mm-hmm. on either side of that spectrum, that's what they need to hear. So if somebody's out there listening, parents, make sure or if you'd like to, suggest to your kids to download the Safe UT app. And if somebody is in crisis and needs help, I pulled it up right here. This is the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Call 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255. Life is worth living. Thank you for listening to the podcast. And if you know somebody who needs help, have them do what I did. Give Pinnacle Recovery Center a call. This is Project Recovery, a KSL podcast.